I am really excited to announce that I'm bringing you a new YouTube video series where we're gonna be learning all about the latest Meta's present platform features, but not just the theory, Instead, we're going to be building one mixed reality prototype per month for each video included in this series, covering various areas such as building of video games and also productivity apps, and also by using more advanced features such as co-presence and also co-location. So for today's first video, we're going to be building a mixed reality tabletop bowling game from start to finish. We're going to be studying to review some of the main game core mechanics, as well as a step-by-step -step installation of the core Meta packages and Meta XR Simulator for very fast development iteration, and you're gonna see how cool this is. Also, we're going to be using basically the new building blocks features to quickly add and set up our camera rig, pass-through components, controllers, hand tracking, grab and poke interactions, and lastly, scene understanding. All right, guys, so let's go over some of the tabletop bowling game mechanics that we're going to be building today. The first thing that this is gonna do is it's going to find a table available in our space. I'm also using hand tracking to be able to pull the ball back. We can also use controllers. I also added a room mesh to be able to collide with the real world. And lastly, we're gonna be looking at how we can create hand poses that look realistic when we're pulling the ball back. We're gonna be using 2022 LTS, so this happened to be the version that we're gonna be using, and also the 3D template. All right, so it looks at like the project I created. Now let's go ahead and go into Window and then Package Manager. All right, guys, so we got it already installed. You can see it in here that all the different meta packages were configured correctly. So the next thing that we need to do, though, is let's go into File and then Build Settings. And I'm going to change the platform here from Windows, Mac, and Linux to Android because we're going to be using Meta to deploy to. So just go ahead and click on Switch Platform. All right, so it looks like that's good to go. So now if you look on the bottom right-hand side, you're going to see there's a very small meta icon. Just click on that and then click on the project setup tool. This is really cool because this wasn't available a long time ago. And if you remember the videos that I did initially, I used to have to walk you through every single setting, so not anymore. Now we have this project setup tool that Meta provides. So what I recommend that you do is go into Android and then just click on Fix All. Looks like we're good to go. One thing that I didn't do though, is it didn't enable the Quest Pro. So just make sure that you do that and also the Quest 3. The next thing that I'm gonna do though, is I wanna show you a new feature, which is really cool. And you can get to it from here by clicking on Building Blocks, or you can also go in here into Oculus and then Tools and also Building Blocks is gonna take you to that same location. So this is building blocks, and this is really cool because it allows you to basically drag and drop different components. And that's what we're gonna be covering today. We're gonna be basically creating everything by using this and then extending it by using different scripts. But this is gonna allow you to get going fairly quickly. And that is something that I really enjoy using. I've been using it for the last two weeks. So I really recommend to stick around and watch the whole video as we use it by adding different features. Add a brand new scene, just click on scene. For this one, I'm gonna call it basic camera rig. And then BB is gonna stand for building blocks. For this part of the demo, I'm going to start from scratch. We're gonna be basically adding a new camera rig. So to do that, all you have to do is you can drag it and drop it in here. You can click on this plus symbol. So as soon as you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this so that you guys can see what it shows you. It's gonna give you always this building block script so that you know that this is actually created by using a building block. I want to start bringing in some content so that we can actually see it. So what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna drag and drop this folder, which I'm gonna make available in GitHub for you guys to also download and follow along. So we're gonna have some content in here that we'll be able to see with pass through and also in VR. So let's go ahead and drag it and drop it. And once you do that, you're gonna have this folder in here available just like I do. Then if you go under the models folder, you're gonna see that I have this MetaQuest 3. Let's go ahead and double click on that. And then just go ahead and drag it and drop it into view in here. We should be good to go. Let's go into build settings and then add the current scene. 
And then I connected my Quest 3 via USB-C. Just make sure that you do that. Let's go ahead and select it. We could add the camera rig manually like we did before, but instead of doing that, let's go ahead and add the pass-through building block. If you go under tracking, you're gonna see that we have controller tracking and also hand tracking. In this case, I'm gonna do the controller tracking. So if I click on the plus symbol, you're gonna see it automatically added all these different components, which is really, really cool. One thing that it doesn't do though, it doesn't map it correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and map this one to L-Touch and then this one to right touch I also want to add hand tracking. So if I click on the plus symbol here, now you can see that we have hand tracking support just by clicking on this building block. So now that we have this though, I think we should be good to go to do another build, but I need to add the prefab that I added from the previous demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this guy here, go into interactions, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop interactions to this Meta Quest 3. If you go under Oculus and then Meta XR Simulator, we're gonna be able to basically use the simulator instead of having to deploy to the device every single time, which is going to be very time consuming. So once you activate it, we can go ahead and test it. So just all you have to do is just click on play. So on the left side, there's gonna be multiple options, device setup, input simulation, graphics, record and replay, telemetry, settings, data forwarding, and also the input simulation and some of the options in here. Yeah, you can move around the headset, but this doesn't really show you a sky because we're using mixed reality. I'm gonna show you how we can change that. But if I do D, I can move to the right. If I move basically A to the left and then W forward and so on. Also, this shows you the active inputs. Let me make this window a little bit bigger so you guys can see. So this means that all the different devices in here are currently set. If I were to hit bracket, either the right bracket or the left bracket, it's going to allow me to basically toggle between either the headset or all the devices, the controller. I can do controller left, controller right, or the headset itself. So it just allows you to, if I just wanna do basically move the headset, which is what I'm doing right now. If I just wanna move the controller by using you know, the WASD, I can also do R to go up and then F to go down. So if you go into, Oculus and then Meta XR Simulator. There's this thing called the Synthetic Environment Server. And right now there are three different rooms that you can simulate. You can do a bedroom, you can do a game room, you can also do a living room. I'm gonna do the game room, that's actually a really cool one. And the guys from Meta were telling me that this is, this happened to be one of the Meta facilities, one of the game rooms, and they went ahead and scanned it. So this gives you an opportunity to see where Meta employees are currently having fun on. So another cool feature that we can also use for the simulator, it's going to be the data forwarding feature. And that, it's going to require that we install an APK on the device. So I have my device right now connected here via USB-C, you guys can see it in here. So if you go under the Meta XR Simulator and then go into Meta XR Simulator, there's gonna be this data forwarding server folder. Go into it. And this is gonna be an APK that we need to install. So I also have the Meta developer hopping here and also I'm connected so you guys can see my quest and also the application that we just deployed to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and right click here and then go into the Explorer, have this window here and then maybe we can just move that one to the left and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop these go into unknown sources and it's gonna show you the data forwarding server, so just make sure you have it open. Once you have it open, you're gonna basically see that it says currently not connected. So what you need to do though, is now on the actual Unity instance, we can go ahead and hit play. Okay, so now it's gonna show you here the data forwarding option. We can toggle it. If you don't have it showing, just click on data forwarding on the left panel, and then also the device that we're gonna be connecting, and just click on connect physical controllers. So now it shows us connected to the headset server. So now I can grab the actual headset here and then just you know use my controller correctly. I can also do the same thing with the left controller here and then move it around. This thing is gonna be called a table to bowling game. 
I'll call it BB as well. Let's go ahead and add a pass-through building block, also a controller tracking, hand tracking, a room mesh, since we're gonna be using a Quest 3. And lastly, we're going to be adding a grab interaction so that we can actually manipulate the ball that we're creating and also create virtual hands. Associate the L-Touch to the left controller. And then I'm also going to do that here for the OVR controller helper and associate this one to our touch. We have more grab interaction here because we were searching for that. So we can just go ahead and drag it and drop it. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna see that it adds this hand grab component to it. And then I'm gonna go into create C sharp script. For this one, I'm gonna call this one the bowler player controller. All right guys, so the first thing here are going to be the interactables. So I need the grab interactable, also the one for the left and right hand. The reason for that is because I need to know where the ray is going to be, depending on whether we're using a hand or we're using the controller. Also different physics and ball behaviors in here, max pull distance, rotation speed, I'm using the force mode in pulls. That one is the one that looks more realistic when it comes to you know pulling a ball. And also I'm gonna show the launch force as we pull the ball back. Basically not only display it, but also show that in a progress bar. And then the stats text is going to show the value. And then launch ball is going to be applying physics on the component that has a rigid body. It's going to require that we specify a variety of different components in here. So one of them is going to be the grab interactables. The progress bar, I haven't really created it yet, so I'll just create it as well. And then I also need to add the spawn area. So let me go ahead and do that. I added the spawn area here with the mesh collider. And this one is only going to be used for basically placing the object. Initially, it doesn't really need to collide with anything. So we could go in here and then just make it trigger collider. That way it doesn't. So I'm gonna make it a convex and also a trigger collider so that we don't have any collisions with the ball. And then just make sure that we associate the progress bar here with the progress bar. I also need the spawn area. So now we can go ahead and go into the spawn area. And then also the arrow though, we don't have the arrow here associated. So I'm just gonna go ahead and associate that. And that should be everything that we need to do as far as those associations. Now if we move it, it's going to look really cool, right? It is changing the launch power. I can also move up and down. I'm holding U as I'm doing this. And you can see that the line render is looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and go down and then go back. And you can see that that's working. And then the ball is also resetting, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new object in here under the game area. And then this one is going to be the, basically the bowling pins. Go up with R and then I'm just gonna go back down here and then maybe more power. There we go, we got it all. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and delete this. And then just make sure that you go in here, everything is zero, so we should be good to go. So go into Oculus and then we can go into tools and then build in blocks. And there's gonna be something called find. So if you search for find spawn positions, 
and then click on the plus symbol, you're gonna see that as soon as you do that, it's going to add two components. The first one is going to be this mixed reality component that allows you to basically get information about different spaces. It's really, really powerful. I recommend looking into it some more. There's also a lot of different handlers in here that you can listen to. And then other options in here that I won't cover today. But the part that is important is going to be the script. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and spawn the table setup. I only want to spawn one table setup because it's only for one game. But if you wanted to spawn multiple objects of different types, then you can do that. And we're going to be doing that today. I'll show you that. In this case, we're going to be using on top of surfaces. And then I'm going to change this to be just table. And then this allows you to check for overlap. So we don't spawn the object, you know, within another object. So we can just enable it. So I like this one because the table is a lot larger. And you can see that now we have the actual bowling pins right on the table. And if I go down here, I can get closer. Let's go ahead and implement the bowling pin. So we can go ahead and create a new C Sharp script. And this is gonna be just bowling pin. You might get an error because I have a mock-up class on one of the managers, but I can show you here what we need to do. So if you double click on the bowling pin manager, I have basically these that I was scrubbing, basically placeholders. For now, on the update, this is where we're going to be looking at the current rotation of the bowling pin by using the rotation at X and also the rotation at Y. The Y value is not really important in this case because all I really care is about the X and Z rotation. I'm also going to be getting the angle calculated from the current rotation and then it's going to do that against the quaternion identity. And then the value that we're gonna get back if it's beyond the minimum knockdown threshold, or if we have this component less than or equal to the minimum knockdown Y position, then I know that I have knocked down the current pin. And then if you notice, we have this bowling pin, which is also another prefab. We can go ahead and add that component. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be for the bowling pin. So you can see that this is currently not knocked down, right? But this is reacting to physics. So what I can do though, just to test it, I'm gonna set it to kinematic and then I'm gonna start rotating this. And then as soon as I start rotating, you're gonna see that when we hit this point, it's going to change these to is knocked down. If we go into the table setup, which is the one that we've been working on, and we can probably just get a little bit closer, just double click on the bowling pin. So there is going to be another object in here, which I call the lane, and that one we can place under the game area. So if you do that. So I think this is looking now a lot better. We're gonna have our ball here and then the bowling pins. If you go down to basically where it says launch ball, which is gonna be that meta, and we can hit F12 to go to it. So here I want to make sure that I start the game session. So I'm gonna say game session manager, and this is gonna start the roll session. So you can say start roll session. So there's also another section in here on the bowling pin manager that we need to uncomment. So it's going to be basically the baller player controller access to the singleton and also listening to these different events. So that way when the ball launches, it's going to unlock the pins. And then also when the ball hits one of the pins, we can basically just play the audio sound that represents that we have hit the pins. Also this instance means that we are accessing a singleton, but we didn't make it a singleton just yet. So all we need to do is basically just access my singleton here and then baller player controller. And then now we can get into the top of the table here, which in this case spawns perfectly. And we can go ahead and change this to my right controller and then go down here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can do a strike on the first time. What do you guys think? Strike. <laughs> So 
there is a component that I'm going to be adding dynamically, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it and drop it so that you guys can see what's gonna happen. If you look at this occluder, what is happening is I'm using a shader that I got from one of the projects created by Meta, and that one has something that allows you to create portals. So you can see that if I move this occluder here, it's going to show me the basically the bottom part of this portal. And this portal is just a box. So if I were to open the gate, so if you look at the gate here and I open it up, you can see that now we can see the inside. So what I wanna do as far as the interaction SDK is I want to add a poke button that is going to open this portal. It's going to basically bring the game down and then it's gonna close the portal. I'm going to go ahead and add a component that is going to add it dynamically. So there's something called add additional dependencies. It's a pretty simple script that is going to basically instantiate this occluder object. If I were to go in here, you can see that it instantiates it. It makes it a parent of the current object that has it attached and then it basically sets up the game portal. And then in this case, I'm gonna go into interaction and you're gonna see that now we have this poke interaction that we can add. As soon as you add it, it's going to add a button in here. For the position though, I'm going to go ahead and move it. We can move it back negative 2.5. So negative 2.5 is going to be at a good location. And then we can also change the, I think the Y axis, I did 1.15. And we can get closer in here, there we go. So we're opening the portal and that looks really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into headset mode and maybe we'll just do into all mode. So you can see that the portal is looking great, right? It's open and it just looks like it's coming out of the table, which is exactly the, the look and feel that I wanted to add. And then left controller and now we can put the portal back in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on add and we're gonna add a new one. The middle, the ring and the max fingers are all set to free because we don't really need to lock those. You can if you want to change how we're grabbing the ball, but in my case, I think this works really well. So the other thing that I wanna do though is I want to mirror these and I also need to make sure that I change these to be only, I only wanna do pinch in this case. And then the hand alignment, I'm gonna say align on grab, so that way we can have that correctly there. And then I'm also going to say create a mirror and that mirror, it's going to allow us to basically mirror the hand pose. Enable both of these components. That's going to be the first thing. And then the synthetic hand though, it's going to basically for, this one is going to be for the left hand. So make sure you assign it to that and then this one is going to be for the right hand. Go into the ball and associate the right hand grab interactable to the one for the right hand. Otherwise, it's not going to have the right pivot location where we need to grab the ball. If we look at the results of creating the hand poses and improving them, you can see how accurate it looks now when grabbing the ball and now so launching and the colors look really cool. Also, this is the final version of the prototype that we created today. Really excited about what we went through. You can look and see how this version is more polished. I have a progress bar, which looks a lot better. Also, the pull menu looks a lot better. You can move the table around and I just have a lot more improvements on this version and both of them are available right now via GitHub. All right guys, I hope you enjoy watching this video and if you wanna watch more videos in this series, just make sure that you hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for your time and if you guys have any questions about it, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.